Dr. Joe Johnson is about to come on and rock the house. Before that, if you are a leader, a visionary, an entrepreneur, purpose-driven, like you just want to change the world, come talk to me. I have some ways I can support you with that, either coming on the 12-hour marathon as a guest, helping you get your message out. Number two, helping you launch your podcast, get your message out into the world like that. Or if you just want coaching on how to effectively do that more, you're not necessarily committed to the podcast yet, we can look at what is your secret sauce and how can we help you do that. So come talk to me at I am Millionaire Chris on Instagram or find me on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash TH3 Burns. I'm looking forward to talking to you and hearing about your purpose, your message. Okay, let's do it. So I also want to talk about the iTunes review of the week. This week it's by David Shahade, and David says Chris is fantastic. The first time I listened to Chris, I knew he is the real deal. He will inspire you to move up higher on the ladder of life wherever you are, as long as you have the desire to learn. Thank you, Chris, for the great work. Thank you, David. I appreciate you. If you want to give us a review, go to beyourgps.com forward slash iTunes or search Becoming Your Greatest Possible Self on the iTunes store and you can find us like that. Let us know what you love about the show, what you want to see more of, give us a rating and review, and definitely, most importantly, subscribe so you can keep getting the latest updates on your iTunes, on your iPhone, whatever you got, or if you go to Spotify, you can find me there as well and get all the latest episodes. Good. Do it. Let's do it. Let's talk about Dr. Joe Johnson because he's going to be coming on and rocking the house. Before that, grab a piece of paper, grab a pen, be ready to take notes because he's going to bring the fire, especially in this conversation of pursue your purpose, not your dreams. This is going to be gold. So let's introduce him and then we'll bring him on the screen. Dr. Joe Johnson is a former standout college athlete who understands the importance of developing individuals and organizations in as many ways as possible. He's had the luxury to gain experiences working in and with corporate America, kindergarten through 12th grade school settings, higher education, and with many entrepreneurs. As a national speaker, trainer, peak performance coach, and entrepreneur leader, Dr. Johnson continues to transform the lives of individuals and organizations by shifting mindsets, which translates into purposeful thinking, acting, and living. As the author of the books, Pursue Your Purpose, Not Your Dreams, and The College Kids, Dr. Johnson is excited to continue developing individuals and organizations that are ready to move to the next level of their greatness through purposeful strategy creation and implementation. Known around the country as the man with the best smile in the world, Dr. Joe Johnson is always excited to watch the growth and transition into who and where we should be. Dr. Johnson, are you ready to rock this house, sir? Let's rock and roll, man. I'm ready. We are now live on Become Your Greatest Possible Self. Thanks so much for being here, Joe. I really appreciate it. We're going to dive right into the theme of the day, which is freedom to fly, man. What does that mean to you? Freedom to fly. Oh, very, very simple, man. Freedom to do whatever you choose as long as it's purposeful and you're intentional about it. Mm, mm, I love it. I love it. The powerful clarity and conciseness, man. I, I, yes. I just think when you when you own your your voice and your message like you are, man, it's, it's just like that's enough. You know, it's enough. It's like, boom, it's more than enough. It just rocks the house. So it, it's so powerful, man. That's great. Great response. Let's talk about who you are as a professional. I mentioned it a little bit in your intro. Who are you? What do you stand for? What do your clients come to you for, man? Yeah, man. I mean, I think a very simple, uh, I speak for a living. Um, Mm. A lot of keynotes, a lot of trainings, but I also do some coaching, peak performance coaching. And for me, that's helping individuals go from where they are to where they want to be or helping organizations do the same thing. Mm. But I think who I am more specifically is an individual that's extremely purposeful. I'm driven. I don't need a lot of outside motivation. Mm. I have a lot of internal motivation. Uh, I tell people all the time that I'm a hustler with the A, Y, because I go hard after everything that I do. But at the end of the day, it's about creating a world that I didn't have growing up, but also making sure I'm helping others do the same thing in their lives. Dude, I love it. I love it, man. So that's that's powerful. You're helping people by speaking. You're helping with coaching, people performance coaching. So you've really studied this this motivation, this purpose, purposeful action, strategic uh, high performance, you know, delivery, delivery of results. That's that's like what counts today. So I know you have a background in being an athlete. Where did all this this uh, you know inspiring and motivating others and being a peak performance person? Where did that all start for you, man? Well, I think when you one of the hardest 
times of an athlete, especially when you're doing it since you're younger, is that time where you're getting ready to transition Mm -hmm. into possibly not playing that sport anymore. Mm -hmm. And when I was in college and I I went to a smaller college, but I had NFL teams looking at me when I had the opportunity to work out for those teams and I never got a call back. It was like, what the hell do I do now? Mm, Yeah. And and so uh, the the best way to put it, when I when I speak to people, I've worked in K through 12 as a counselor. I've worked in higher education. I've worked in corporate America. And through all those times, my soul was telling me this is not it. Mm. And so I had to find something that gave me the same high as when I was playing sports. And it just so happened to be speaking. I fell into it. I got on that stage and it was just like sports. I practiced, get in front of the crowd and boom. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's an adrenaline rush, man. Especially like when you're first starting, it's it's confronting the the fears and the insecurities. What do they think about me? Especially in the beginning, you're like, I just want to do this right. I want to I want to make a good impact. And of course, we still care about that as we grow. But especially in the in the beginning, it's like throwing ourselves in the ring, throwing ourselves on the field, and just like, yeah. all right, let's go after it. <laughs> That's right. That's right. I mean, because I can still remember. Uh, I just listened to one of the first times I ever spoke and I I couldn't listen. I said, this is terrible. It's like, <laughs> what am I doing? But, you know, during those times, you're building confidence. You're just yeah. learning the ropes, man. And so, like mm-hmm. you said, it's not necessarily, it's about the impact. But at that time when you're first starting, you're just trying to figure out what the hell to do so you can have impact, you know? Yep. Yep. I think that's that's a, a journey a lot of people go through What because most of us aren't taught how to find our purpose. And I'm sure you you relate to this and it probably fires you up when you're like, man, if only people were given these tools and abilities as kids, imagine what a different world we would live in. But thankfully, we got people like Dr. Joe Johnson, who's there to pick up where parents and schools and and, you know, society drop the ball on preparing our kids for emotional intelligence, on knowing what their values are, knowing what they stand for, knowing how to speak up for themselves. And you really go in there and and support, especially young adults and kids and, you know, people, organizations too. But like, I I think for me, it's like my heart is, is the next generation and giving them a shot where older generations may not have, you know? Yeah, that, that, that's true, man. I mean, I'm, I'm writing my, my second, my, well, my third book, uh, second book about purpose. And, you know, I just was thinking about, how many things we have to unlearn in order to unleash our purpose. Because, you know, I I begin to shift my language because I don't necessarily think we have to find it because the purpose is there, right? Mm -hmm. Purpose is inside of us. It's about unleashing it into the world, into the world. You know what I mean? And so many of us, you know, we have it at the, the, the whole time. And many clients that I work with, they, they've known since they were younger what they wanted to do. They started to do everything else. And when I work with them, they end up doing exactly what they knew they wanted to do in the first place. <laughs> <laughs> man it's like we just buy into somebody else's mold and somebody else's like dream for us right instead of really living our purpose i know that's that's something else that you really you, you really harp on is not to focus on the dreams but what's the the purpose how do you live your purpose so tell us a little bit more about that how did you discover that as your your message you know i think one of the I don't want to call it some of the worst advice that we get, but I think we've heard dream big Mm -hmm. and follow your dreams for so long. And if you look at the research and see that 52 percent of Americans hate what they do every day Mm -hmm. and 71 percent of them are disengaged at work, there's a disconnect because we've been hearing it since we were younger. Dream big, follow your dreams. And we do that. Mm -hmm. However, how come we never were told, you know, Think about your purpose. You know, what is your purpose? That's a whole nother mindset. And I'm not saying don't dream, but what I'm saying is often we got to put our dreams into context or you'll end up in a place where you really don't want to be and you'll end up further away from your purpose. Yeah. And also I think the, the, go for your dreams, it almost brings in a a connotation of, but it's not really possible. Or Mm -hmm. what what are the superficial things that you dream of? Like, oh, a a nice car, a nice house, you know, the the man or woman of your dreams. And it's all external things. What do you want to achieve rather than, in my opinion, purposeful living is, is every day, like living it as if it's your last every day saying, this is it, this, this journey, this day, this is my purpose being here, serving, showing up and loving my fellow human beings and giving my gifts to them and and making a difference. Like that's purposeful living, man. So true. And I, and and, you know, I'm thinking about 
I'm just thinking about all the fairy tales when you're younger, you know, Cinderella, Snow White, just all these fairy tales about, you know, it's just like this dream and this, and, and sometimes people, we get stuck in these mm-hmm. fairy tales. In reality, our skills, our strengths, what we're truly supposed to do have nothing to do with a lot of this fake reality that we create in our minds. Man, man. So how can we really start getting in tune with those skills and those strengths that most people have forgotten that they had or had forgotten that that's, that that's the really where they're supposed to spend their time and their energy? Yeah, you know, so so let, let's let's take let me give you a prime example. So let's take somebody that. Um, may have just graduated college. They get they get their first job. They've done everything that the world said they're supposed to do. They got good grades in high school. Mm-hmm. They went to college. Mm-hmm. They graduated. They get this so called dream job or job, whatever it may be, and they get there and they're like, "What in the hell? This is not what I want to do. <laughs> right? This isn't what I thought it was going to be." And the crazier part is, they could be making a lot of money. The salary can be huge, right? But they get there and they're like, this can't be it. This this isn't what I thought. Mm -hmm. And so let's take it from there. And so what I tell individuals is that sometimes one of the activities that I love to have people do is to put on some music from back when they were younger Mm -hmm. because it takes, you you ever smell something or hear a song and it takes you back to that time? Yep. Yep. Right. So sometimes I have them just go, just go, but just do some things, listen to some things that you used to listen to back in the day. And sometimes it just helps them get into that mold of what was I thinking back then? What was I thinking about? I want to do. And then one of the things that I ask them to do is write down all of the strengths that they think they have. Hmm. Right. All of the skills that they think they have. Yep. And once they write that down, I ask them now what I want you to do is ask somebody that's close to you, a best friend, a family member, somebody that knows you really well and ask them to write it down and make a comparison. Because often we think we're strong at something or we're great at something and we're not. Mm. Only we see it. Nobody else does. Mm. Right. And, and so we're taking things that we think we're great in and we're moving forward in that. But the reality is that has nothing to do with what you're really good at. Mm. Right. And so. Part of that is that journey towards the purpose, figuring out what are my strengths? What do people see as my strengths? And the other part is having a clear view on who you are, because one of the one of the easiest questions that we can ask but can't answer is, who are you? And so many people begin to talk about I'm a wife or I'm a husband or I work here or they name all these things. And it's about the core the core identity of who you are. And many people, a lot of us don't know who we are. Therefore, when you don't know who you are, people can pull you in different directions and say, hey, this is what you are. This is what you should do. And we fall victim to that. Yeah, dude, that's that's so powerful. You, you shared a ton of gold in there. So number one is to identify what are your strengths and skills that you're good at. And that's like create your own list. The second mm-hmm. is to ask for feedback from the people around you and the closest to you, especially the ones who you respect and say, you know, what do you see that I'm good at? And Mm -hmm. I think there's probably two things that happen a lot. Number one, for me, I know a lot of people kept saying to me, this is what you're good at, but I wouldn't acknowledge that in myself. I would say, oh, you know, it's not that big of a deal. Everybody does that. Or I would say, oh, yeah, I'm really good at this, but nobody else would reinforce that they saw me as good at that, you know? Right. It's a trip, man. It's it's, it's true. And and the problem that I'm seeing and been seeing for a while is that when individuals never tap into the initial layer of their purpose, they never get introduced to the other layers of their purpose. Wow. Because, because it's not like you're going to do one thing and until you die, that's the only thing what's going to happen is you're going to tap into that initial layer of your purpose Mm -hmm. and you're going to realize like, Oh my goodness, I never thought that I would be doing this and doing this and being connected to this person. And, you know, so we have to tap into that initial layer of our purpose. And that's, that sounds like it's just committing and making a decision that you're going to be on the journey. You're going to say, Hey, I, I, wherever I'm at, it's perfect. And I know that there's deeper to go and maybe they have zero awareness of what their purpose is and their skills. And they're just starting out. You know, like you said, they've, they've gone through college and done what everyone told them to do. But now they're like, man, I feel like I was sold somebody else's dream, not my own purpose, right? And so they get to start being aware of that. Or even people who who feel like, man, yeah, I've been I've been doing this this expertise, this this thing, this trade that I'm good at, that I'm great at, that I'm, I'm I have an authority in in the industry, but they still don't feel connected to their purpose. Well, there's probably a deeper level of who you are and how you're meant to serve the world that people haven't 
really pulled open and, and like peeled away the, the layers of the onion. Yes. Yes. And, and, and there's a, and I'm pretty sure you can relate with this. There's a, there's a feeling that you get mm. and you just know, mm. you know, you are fully aligned and tapped in. And there's a feeling that you get also when you're in the wrong place. And the pro and the other issue is people know when they're not doing what they should be doing, when they're not living purposefully, but because of society, because of these pressures, because of mm. all this that we've been taught, we just stick with it because we got this degree as a, as a teacher, I'm just going to stay a teacher, even though I hate teaching mm. Mm. and it messes up our lives. It's like there's, there's value in suffering through something that you're not meant to do you know that yeah sure there's going to be parts that are uncomfortable when you're learning the basics when you're really like getting that foundation in place not knowing and and like messing up and making mistakes and failing that's going to happen on the journey to mastery but it's a different it's a different thing when you're like you you feel like you have to drag yourself through the motions of life because you're just so miserable you're unfulfilled you're not clear on on who you are why you're showing up you you don't feel like you're on purpose and that's a completely different feeling. You're right, man. Yeah. And it, it, it's, you know, I, I think about, I just think about people that I've worked with in the K through 12 setting in the higher ed setting and corporate setting. And many of us, we have people like this right now at our jobs, right? We hear them every day. I hate this. I can't stand this. You know what? I'm going to find a new job. I'm going to blah, blah. And what happens five, 10 years later, they're still in the, at that same place doing that same thing. And what that tells me is there is a level of fear yeah. that so many individuals have because at the end of the day, I define fear as finding excuses about reality. Mm -hmm. Reality is, you know that something is not for you. And if you don't do something about that, you'll be in the same situation complaining. So you got to do something different, no matter what you feel in terms of that fear. Yeah. yeah. And that's, that's, I think the, the fear of rejection, the fear of people laughing at us when we truly try to pursue our purpose. I think that's what keeps them it, like kind of being sheep and just trying to fit in rather than saying, I'm, I know I'm worth it. I know my purpose. I'm meant to discover and I'm meant to investigate it. And I think a lot of people are afraid of losing friendships and losing the, the, the environment that was comfortable for them mm -hmm. to take that mm -hmm. leap into the unknown to live out their greatest possible self, to live their purpose. Mm, the, the fact that you just said that, you, you just, you know, the, the light bulb went off on, on what I was thinking about a few months ago. I was just thinking about how many people listen to individuals that are not in their purpose, but they continue to take advice from those individuals, i.e. sometimes it's your parents, mm -hmm. so you don't want to get them mad. Sometimes it's your best friend. Sometimes it's your partner, you know, your girlfriend, boyfriend, wife, husband, whoever it may be. And we listen to these individuals who are not in their purpose or struggling to figure out what that is and unleash that. And we remain stuck. We can't take advice from people that are just as stuck as we are. It makes zero sense. Mm -mm. No, no, man. So I know that people can have a conversation with you and they can start getting that clarity on their purpose. What else would you recommend that they can do in the now to get more clarity, to start taking action on their purpose and, and really living a, a life that's fulfilling for them, man? Yeah, I, I, you know, growing up, a lot of times you hear people like some people know what they want to do and sometimes it happens. They just feel it like they know. But what also happens is they're like, this is what I want to do. I know it. I, 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 I know. And I'm like, have you ever experienced it? Have you ever went and just tried mm -hmm. it to see if that's what you like? I thought I wanted to be a principal at one point. It took me an hour and a half to realize that's not what I want to do. <laughs> An hour and a half. I went, I hung out for, for a half a day with the principal. Within that first hour and a half, I was like, absolutely not. Yeah. But I, com I stayed committed to the time I said I was going to be there just because, <laughs> right? And so one of the things that we can do is if we say, this is what I think I should be doing, mm. go spend some time in that space. Mm. Talk to people in that space. Yeah. Because you may figure out that, oh, it's not what I thought. And it is, it'll help you prevent from spending four years in college, five years in college. It, it, it'll prevent you from wasting your time. Mm, man. 
Yeah, I think that's that's super important is to go find people who are doing what you think you want to do and then get into their life, understanding yep. what that lifestyle entails and ask them, hey, where do I start to be able to do this? You know, if you want to be, let's say, a, a news anchor, like what does it take to get to that place? Well, maybe you got to be a, a, a coffee runner, you know, an assistant right. for, right. for years to like work your way up or whatever it might be. Um, or let's say you want to be a major league baseball player. Well, Maybe you got to go be the, the ball boy, like catching balls on the side or, you know, who, who knows like where people need to go to, to get started, but to, to go investigate and be curious and take steps. Say, what's the next piece of information that I need? What can I do next to really make progress on this? Mm, what, what you're describing, Chris, is that process that everybody wants to cheat nowadays. Mm. I have a hack for this. Hack your, Look here, you can't hack your way to purpose. It don't work <laughs> like that. It don't work like that. You have to sometimes go through the process to figure out the, the do's, the don'ts, to figure out, okay, this is how I move, to figure out how I get. You cannot cheat the process. And we're in a day, we're, we're in a time where everywhere on social media, everybody thinks that they can go from, from not knowing what they want to do to overnight. I got it. It don't work like that, man. No. Now, how do, how do you recommend uh, younger people, especially, but anyone, to to temper their expectations to to really to really be able to be patient and have grace with themselves? Like, what would you recommend to those people who wanted it yesterday, wanted their purpose yesterday, man? Well, you know, the first thing that I will say is I understand why some people would want that quick overnight. You know, because mm. some people come from just just struggle. They come from chaos, right? And so they're just trying to figure out how to get out of that. So I, I, I can understand why they want it so fast. But what I can also absolutely 100% tell them is that the process sometimes is just as important mm. as you reaching the destination. Mm. There's so many lessons that you learn. And I would challenge them to speak to anybody that's doing what they want to do and, and they will see that there's so many different processes often that people had to go through, but there's always a process. Yeah. There's always a process. And you and once again, you can't cheat it. You can't speed it up because, Chris, your process, if we're going after the same thing, say we want to be singers or whatever. If both of us are trying to be singers, your process may look different, but I guarantee you, you you're going to have a process. Yep. Right. Yeah. There's there's no like snap your fingers and you're there. There has to be some kind of bridge. There has to be some kind of ladder. There has to be some kind of process or pathway to get there. Yes. And they ha they must learn to honor and respect all of the small wins mm. that are going to happen throughout mm. that process and all of the small or large losses that they will get. Because it's not about winning or losing. It's about winning or learning. Mm. Right. Yeah. Yeah, man. It's a, uh, it's that, uh, growth mindset, Carol yes. S. Dweck, you know, like that, uh -huh. that is so freaking powerful, man. If, if you just celebrate kids when they're getting A's and you know, it's like, Oh yes. <laughs> it's such a powerful book, man. And it, it, that, that really is like a revolution in parenting and teaching yes. uh, our, our students, our clients, the next generation, kids, whatever. That is so powerful, man. Yeah. Yeah. And, and this, you know, we, we do have access to information and knowledge and resources a lot faster than we used to. But that does not mean that the process is sped up. It means that you may you may you may be able to get information and knowledge faster, but that does not speed up the process necessarily. Mm. Yeah, I love it. I love it. And even even if it's like it's almost to be grateful that, hey, I have access to the information. I have access to the mentors, to the coaches, to the people like the information is so easily accessible. So it's like we could be grateful for that instead of saying, man, I, I suck or I'm not growing as fast as I want. What can you be grateful for? What what can you celebrate as a win? And then where can you be appreciative of the learning and the growth curve? Because that's that's going to be in every major undertaking that, that you go for. And I know you, you, you said you're writing your third book now, man. What was it like writing the, the first two books? And how is it different writing the third one now? 
Well, I, I think that, you know, I was writing a dissertation mm. and two books at the same time, right? So mm. I was doing all kind of writing. Wow. Um, but this time it's a little bit different because I'm going after a major publisher mm. and, and, and instead of self-publishing my book. Yeah. And I, I there's going to be some things that I've learned that it's not necessarily different than what I wrote in my first book about purpose, mm-hmm. but it's, it's expanded and it's evolved. Yeah. Right? And yeah. so I'm looking at so much differently. I'm, I'm, I've, I've had what another six, seven years of my life. And so I just, I just think it's time. And the process now is doing a lot more research. I did research before, but doing a lot more to help me guide what I'm writing. Wow. Do you think, uh, do you think people who are writing a book for the first time that that, right uh, the research is an essential part to having a good book or would you say that you know people can kind of just do it and and without the research necessarily and still create a good book what do you think yeah I th- well i think a lot of us we have experiences that we could pull from we could yeah. pull from our own experiences we can pull from other other folks experiences and so you can write a hell of a book based off experiences mm. but i think that you know you have you have different types of people you have people that love to hear from experience and you also have people that love okay well, what are the statistics right yeah, they want the science yeah, yeah. So how can you blend them and so that you can feed everybody Wow. Yeah. So it's like bringing the the storytelling, which is like the emotional aspect, if that's what someone needs and the experiential, so to speak. And then there's the other aspect of, hey, what are the facts and figures to satisfy yeah. the people who are logical and who want to say, well, what's your proof? You know, like, how do you how do you know this? So it's like knowing how to reach as many audiences as possible in one piece of work. That's that's like mastery, you know. Yeah. And some people, you know, you, you know, I think of, you know, I listen to a lot of Tim Ferriss, Lewis Howes and, you know, a lot of other authors. And if if you if you listen to them, you hear them, they're, they're doing research for two, three years. Like yeah. Tim Ferriss, is, he's, he's the human science experiment. Yeah. Right. He's always yep. testing things on himself. Right. <laughs> and so <laughs> It's just interesting to hear other folks process. Mm. And, you know, I think sometimes when you get with a major publisher, you may not have that much time. They're trying to get their stuff out. But yeah. the research is extremely important. Yeah, man. What, what have you learned uh, speaking, public speaking? We have a lot of, you know, visionaries, entrepreneurs, public speakers or aspiring speakers in our audience. What have you learned doing all this speaking, man? <laughs> well, I learned that you never know who you're impacting. That's number mm. one. Never know. You can feel like that audience is tuned out. They're not paying attention. Mm. And. You may have a million people come up to you afterwards and be like, you just changed my life. You helped me from committing suicide. Like you, you never know who's in the audience. And so whatever message that you have, as long as it's purposeful, as long as it's really coming from your heart and your soul and you're taking the profession of speaking seriously, yeah. man, you're going to impact so many people. Yeah. And I think we, we talked about this on the, on the pre-interview is like how many people just expect to, to show up and just like wing it versus actually preparing for the opportunity and being successful because they prepared. <laughs> That's so, man, it's, it's so true. I mean, like I said earlier, it's, it's like sports. If I didn't practice, mm-hmm. like I wasn't going to go in the game and score four or five touchdowns. Like I, I wasn't going to be able to read the play. Same with <laughs> Like you got to know your audience. You got to know your flow. You got to know your transitions. You got to know, you know, you got to read the crowd. You may even switch it up mid mid speaking engagement and just do something different because it's coming from your soul, you know? Wow. So it sounds like you also learned how to, how to trust yourself. And even if you did prepare, you're like, okay, well I have this plan, but you know, the audience needs something else. And we gotta, we gotta work something else in to, to innovate, to bring a fresh intuitive feel to what it is that they need. And it's like, cause it's, you, you, you can prepare all you want, but once you get on stage, that's when you really get the feedback of where do we go from here? Hey, so I'm feeling like, you know, you're not hyped up about this message, you know, like what do you, what do you want to learn today you know like get their get their feedback get their opinion like i think that there's so many ways to innovate on the fly but if you don't come prepared you're just like man i i I just, you're not helping yourself. <laughs> right. right. I mean, like you just, you're just shooting from the hip and I always yeah. tell people the, the, the new folks that are getting into speaking, like you can shoot from the hip if you want, but part of speaking in that fir- those first, you know, few years that you're doing it is really just learning your style, yeah. you know, learning your message, 
you know, uh, making sure that you're learning how to read the audience, making sure you know when to, when, when to soften your voice, when to speed up. Right. There's so many small, you know, little, little practical things that people don't really pay attention to mm-hmm. until you sit with them and you break it down. See, when I did this here, you see those filler words that you keep using. Right. There's, it's just so much that you learn. Yeah. Dang, man. Um, what what has been some of the biggest, most inspiring feedback that you've gotten from from speaking? I know you mentioned like some people have said, you know, I was thinking about committing suicide and like you really helped me to, to come out of that. Anything else really stand out for you uh, along the journey? Well, I think uh, probably and I'm going to start with a compliment somebody gave me. Yeah. It was probably the funniest, but one of the best compliments I ever received. And I went to go speak. And one of my high school coaches was there Mm -hmm. and it was a young guy went up to him and said, man, when we were in the room, he just, it just seemed like he was so massive and big. And then I got next to him and he's not as tall as I thought he was, you know? So (laughs) that was probably one of the best and funniest compliments that I ever received because he got the message and he he, he thought that I would be so much bigger. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So, you know, that, that was a great compliment. But I, but I think what really hits me the most is when I get an email or, you know, somebody comes to me afterwards and they say, you know, you really changed my life. And that that feels really great to know that I'm doing some awesome work. Yeah, man. Yeah. What, what do you think it is in your conversation with them that that makes it impactful, that makes it make the difference for them in their life? The first thing that comes to mind is sharing to me everything that I believe traditional education should be sharing, Mm. right? Mm. Talking about things in a way where it's not cookie cutter, it's being honest, but it's also challenging the way in which they've been taught to believe certain messages, Mm. right? And I and, and I think when when I do that, and I do that in an energetic in a, you know, I know when to walk up to somebody and might just touch them on the shoulder or just stare them right in their eyes. You know, there's certain ways that you do it to have impact. Yeah, know? dude, that's that's <laughs> so awesome, man. Um, so this this next book that you're writing, tell us a little bit more about what you're what you're out to create the impact with. Is it is it educating people on their purpose and really empowering them with that? I know you meant you mentioned you wrote one before, and this uh-huh. one you're going deeper into the research. Is that the case? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go, going deeper and just, um, you know, some of the information that I shared before, it's evolved. And and so uh, challenging a lot of like one. So one of the areas is specifically about challenging all of these things that we've been told since growing up. Prime example. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not what you know is who, you know. Mm-hmm. Right. That's a lie. That's not that's not the full story. It's about what you know. It's about who, you know, and it's about how you build relationships with the people that, you know. Yep. Right. Uh, uh, you know, we've been here and you can do anything you want in life. No, you can't. <laughs> you can't. Right. And part of the reason you can is you need to understand the game that you're playing in before you try to jump in there. Wow. Right. And so I'm breaking down so many different, um, (laughs) I guess, so so many so much advice that we continue to hear over and over again, but really just breaking it down and saying, well, what does this truly mean? Mm. Right. What does this really mean? Right. Mm. And and also, you know, another another piece that I love of the book is really breaking down. What is this so-called American dream? Mm. Right. And I think you can break that down in terms of what it means for dif- different ethnicities or races, right? You can break it down just in general. What, you know, I keep hearing the white picket fence, you got a good job, you got two and a half kids. I'm like, what the hell is two and a half kids, right? <laughs> <laughs> right, just breaking it down. Like, what is this? So yeah. I'm just excited about some of, you know, some of the new information I'm putting in there, but also some of the information I have evolved from my first book. Mm. What, what, doors would you say have opened or opportunities would you say you've gained because of writing the books? Well, well, the first thing that comes to mind is, you know, as a speaker, you can, you can go somewhere and they might pay you to speak. But the other thing that I learned as a, as, as a speaker at the beginning of my career is that that's great. Yeah. But do you have any products that can also help them after they hear your message? Yep. Right. And so the 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 book, the workbook, the online course that I, you know, what I'm saying all of that helps to further and helps individuals go deeper into the message that I shared during the keynote. 
like any final pieces of wisdom that we didn't yet get to in the interview that you really just want to drive home and make sure people get about their purpose, about you know really stepping into that and, and focusing on that, focusing on the journey, focusing on the daily actions, anything else you really want to drive home, man? Yeah, I think, you know, the first thing that I, I think about is too often I'm running into individuals <laughs> that they believe something because their grandparents or parents taught them. And the issue that I see is the only reason that they believe is because their parents or grandparents believe that. Mm. And what I share with individuals all the time is we always must, we must always question our answers. That does not mean you're going to change what you believe, mm. but it allows you to continuously grow and either you're going to affirm what you already believe or you're going to learn something different. And mm. I think so many of us are so scared to believe one thing, learn something else, and begin to shift and believe something different, yeah. especially individuals that are extremely religious. And it's nothing against religion, but what they have to understand is when you become that individual that's still operating off of, off of information and knowledge that was relevant years ago, mm. never be able to fully align yourself in your purpose because you'll always be fighting against what God of the universe is telling you you should be doing. Wow. How do you how do you temper that with like avoiding doubt because I think a lot of people doubt themselves and mm -hmm. they they wonder if oh should I be doing this? Should I be doing that? How do you how do you question in a healthy way and be open to 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 the best and optimal route and an evolution in a healthy way? Well, I think we train ourselves to trust ourselves. Mm. Right? And what I mean by that is like we're always making decisions. Mm. Right. And I think sometimes let me not say I think because I, I don't want to use that word. I believe that often we must even trust ourselves to make the wrong decision. Mm. Right. And for to, to trust yourself to be right and to trust yourself to be wrong allows you that opportunity to just fully trust yourself because at the end of the day, we're always learning, Yeah. right? We don't know everything. We don't have the ability to be perfect. I just heard a quote and it said something, and I may be messing it up. It said, it's about knowing that we can never be perfect, but always trying to be perfect, right? Mm in a sense. And I was like, wow, that's deep. Like, you know, you can't ever be perfect, but you're always shooting to be the best version of whatever. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I love this, Joe. And on my, my end, you froze again. Right? Am I, am I not frozen on your end? You're frozen, but I'm, I'm <laughs> moving. Can you hear me and see me? I can't see you moving, but I, you're, you're frozen, but I can hear you. <laughs> okay. Okay. Yeah. I don't, I don't, I don't know what that's about. Let's see. <laughs> Try to turn off your video and turn it back on. All right, let's see here. Come on, video. Stop back crazy on. What about now? <laughs> I see I gray. I see gray. Yeah. Oh, you're back. Awesome. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. What's going on? Technology, man. See? We want perfect technology, but it can't always be perfect. <laughs> <laughs> That's my, my girlfriend. She's always affirming, man, I love technology when it works. <laughs> yeah, Even yeah. like, especially when it's like crapping out, you're like, man, I love technology when it works. <laughs> Right. It's awesome, man. So this is uh, this is gold, Joe. Um, let's wrap it up with, you know, the final piece of wisdom you want to give to our audience and then how can they stay connected with you, man? Yeah, so the finally the the, the final piece is, you know, and I'm a, I'm gonna be a little vulnerable with this. Um, probably over the last year or two, uh, my partner, my wife and I, we we've you know, it's been a it's been a struggle. And it's been a struggle partly because what I had to come to grasp, grasp with is that the way that I've been taught and trained throughout my life to operate does not always work when you connect with somebody, right? And I, I had to learn to let go of fear, and I'm still learning, let go of fear of missing out on opportunities or missing out on money and sometimes I have to put other people first, right? And so there's a level of always 
discovering and rediscovering your own stuff, even when you have whatever it is to help other people, you have to ask yourself, what is your stuff? Because if you never deal with your stuff, once again, you can't fully align and operate in the full potential of your purpose. So it's it's the continual, it's like kind of a similar line of question what you hold true. Question those yeah. beliefs. Question, is this my best? Question, I know I'm, I I feel like I'm giving my best. Is there another level? Is, is there something that might be blocking me? Is there something that might be in the way? And how can I seek the, the mirrors, coaches, mentors that can reflect back to me how I'm doing and what I could use improvement on? And when I get that feedback, how do I respond to it? How do I, how do I integrate it? How do I grow from it? Hey man, we're spot on, spot on. And, and, and like you, and, and you brought up coaches and mentors or whoever, be okay and know that you're probably going to need a coach. I was yep. against it for so long. Yep. And once I got one, it was like, <laughs> whoa, I wish I would have done this earlier. But we yep. think because we have YouTube, we have books that we can learn everything on our own and we mm-hmm. can but coaches accelerate your success. Coaches help you find pockets of areas that you're, pockets of money that you're missing, pockets of opportunity that you're missing. So coaches are extremely important. And to invest in yourself and your purpose is, is one of the best things that you could ever do. Absolutely, man. This is this is gold, Joe. People want to know how they can get more, how they can continue developing, discovering, and living their purpose with you. What are the next steps that they can take? How can they get a hold of you, have a conversation with you, man? Well, every single day you can find me on Instagram at Joe Johnson Speaks. You can make sure you go to www.purpose2019.com if you really want to do. I have a short online course, but I want you to stay connected and it's going to help you really tap into that journey of your purpose. And and last thing, go get my first book, Pursue Your Purpose, Not Your Dreams. It's on Amazon. It's probably one of the easiest, but one of the most powerful books you'll read on helping you to align yourself and tap into that journey of your purpose. Mm, I love it. Joe, you are the man. Thank you so much for being here. Everyone who's listening or watching, stay connected with Joe at Joe Johnson Speaks and definitely go visit Purpose2019.com and go get all that gold. Go get that little course and then also have a conversation with Joe. Joe, you are the man. Thanks so much for being here. I appreciate you. Chris, thank you so much for having me. I love your energy and I'll stay tuned to the work that you're doing. Yes. Just the beginning, man. I'll talk to you soon. (laughs) All right. Take care. Take care, brother.